What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we have another buyer's guide video for you. Today, we are talking everything drop shot, baits, hooks, gear, we got you covered. Let's go. Man, it is good to be back into the buyer's guides. We took a little bit of a break there, got some actual instructional back in, got redialed on the winter thing, got some fishing done, but we know those holidays are coming. Let's keep talking buyer's guides. Today we're talking drop shot. A couple of weeks ago, Tim did a winter video, a finesse video, and talked really in depth about some of these baits. But today is that buyer's guide to help you pick out key baits for different situations. Go ahead, kick us off. Yeah, drop shot. You know, when we're putting together the schedule to talk about these different buyer's guides, uh, drop shot is such a vast category. I mean, I, hundreds, if not a thousand different types of plastic worms on the market. <laughs> right. So uh, today we we broke it down into, uh, I don't know what, eight, seven or eight different baits for you. Got yeah. a couple different hooks to try, but I will kick it off talking about worms. And number one for me is going to be a robo worm. Four and a half inch fat, six and a half inch, or six inch, sorry, uh, fat or straight tail. Both mm -hmm. work great depending on the fishery that you're fishing. Clear Lake, we're throwing the six inch fat. You know, some other bodies of water that have smaller fish, maybe just go with the six inch fat or the four and a half. But the benefit of throwing a, a robo worm is their colors. Their color selection, I wanna say there's 50 or 60 colors. Yeah. And no matter where you are in the country, you can find a worm that your fish eat. And I've thrown a robo worm ever since I was a teenager and they've been around for a long time. Great colors. Biggest fish I've ever seen caught on a robo worm was in a TOC. My buddy Wes caught a 12-2 on a on a six inch robo worm. Uh, we we want to want a boat, but uh, yeah, the robo worm, very very uh, great baits. Like I said, they're they've been around for a long long time. Best sellers. Color selection is phenomenal. Definitely stick or try these guys right here. You know, the thing with Robo Worm is it's not just that they have this endless selection of colors, it's that every single one of the colors is a complex color. Right? Yeah, Even they're... Green Pumpkin isn't like straight green pumpkin. They, all their colors are laminated colors, they've got a lot of detail to them, they just look good. Yeah, like this guy right here, this is a Prism Shad color, so it's a ghost color, but it has some, some purple, kind of like a light pink, purplish vein in it, some flake in it. I mean, they are, when you get them in water, they just brighten up right. and they really, really shine. Uh, but again, they're, they're uh, number one on my list. All right, number one on my list, there's a lot of different actions when it comes to drop shot baits. There's baits that just sit there and sort of quiver. There's baits that'll get really erratic that you can pop them and work them and they get all this movement. I like baits that have some movement a lot of the year. So one that really stands out for me is the Smalley Smasher. Now in that winter video, Tim talked about that three and a half inch in the green pumpkin purple, which is an excellent winter time bait. There's another color that I use specifically in the spring and the summer. And that's this one. So still the Smalley Smasher. This is the larger size. I throw it in both sizes. But this color, they call it, I'm gonna read it because I'll screw it up. Yeah, it's, it's the longest color ever. Green pumpkin, orange, black, pearl, blue flake. <laughs> Let's just call it bluegill. Okay, it is yeah. green pumpkin with orange and purple flake, and then it's got this pearlescent blue belly. I mean, it literally is a bluegill. This is a bait that shines for me in the springtime. The Smalley Smasher, a fish year round. But that color coming into the spawn, going out of the spawn, when those bluegills are up in there with the bass, they do not play well together. That is a deadly bait. And it's a bait that has a ton of movement and action. So I don't fish it. I don't do like the drop shot shake, right? I like to pop it and let it die. Pop it and let it die. And it'll get this big swim to it and then it kind of flutters down. It's a very erratic action, and I like that bait a lot. 
in that circumstance. Yeah, you can make it erratic because that like beaver style tail on it, but right. if you just sit there and just hold it clear water right now, waver. that tail is just gonna sit there and just kinda just kind of dance around, very yep. subtle. Uh, so it's a great wintertime bait as well. And like Matt talked about in that winter finesse video, I talked a lot about uh, baits with little to no action because you don't want a bait down there just kicking around in your right. cold winter months. So right. depending on the different time of the season that you're fishing is gonna depend on the different uh, baits that you throw. And how you work them. Exactly. Uh, you did talk about color. I did not talk about color, but I will, down below in the video description, we will link like one or two of our favorite colors in all yeah. of these baits. Uh, hands down, my number one color for the Robo Worm is Margarita Mutilator 3, MM3. Yeah. That is a fish catcher no matter where you are in the country. If you wanna go, you know, go with a, a, a kind of a clear color, like a ghost color, that Prism Shad is another winner. But mm -hmm. like Orange Crusher, you really like. Yep, People's, People's Worm. worm. Um, Aaron's Magic, Morning Dawn, I mean, the, I, the list can go on and on, but next worm up for me is gonna be a Reaction Innovations Flirt. Now this is a worm that can have a lot of action. It's got a tapered tail to it. This is actually the 4.95, so just under five inches. So it's kind of a, a meteor section up here with a little kind of spear kind of tail, I guess you'd call it, kind of a spade tail, but it really cups that water just like that Smalley Smasher. So if you're just sitting there and just kind of shaking it just a little bit, letting the current down there, let that little tapered tail just down there kind of flicker around, uh, works really well. Summertime, springtime, warmer water time, you know, you're shaking it, you're popping it up, letting it fall, it's gonna swim down and really do the, the I guess, snake kick or whatever you want, kind of just that, that little shimmy of a yeah. tail, if you will. But uh, that guy right there, it comes in two different sizes, a 4.95 and a 6.95. That 6.95, I don't really throw it on a drop shot because it is almost a seven inch yeah, worm. Yeah, I don't either. But it works really well on a shaky head. Yep. But for a drop shot, I like that 4.95 mm -hmm. and that is a winner right there, guys. All right, my next one is a Strike King bait. This is the KVD Dream Shot. Fairly simple bait, narrow bodied, and then it really gets slender, and then again it bulges out at the tail. So again, I like these baits. I don't drop shot anywhere near as much as Tim does, just to be honest with you. It's, it's a technique that I turn to, there are key times of year when I'll pick it up, and otherwise I pick it up when the going gets tough. It's not a bait that I start my day out with. I just like to start out power fishing, right? That's just my style. So for me, the times of year that I throw a drop shot are a little different than other people. So I like to fish those baits aggressively in the springtime. So almost every bait that I choose is a bait that's got some shape back there in the tail so you can work that bait when you want to in that warmer water. So the Dream Shot is another one of those baits where you can get subtle with it, you can just play with it, but you've also got the option to work that bait a little bit more aggressively. The key with any drop shot bait, if you are aggressive with them, is to pop them up and then to give them time. It's not like you're gonna sit and just overwork that bait. If you do that, you don't catch anything. <laughs> right. right. There's a couple of ways to catch a drop shot fish. One is the standard way, the other is to, to be more aggressive and then just Give it time and that bait will settle down on its own. And then again. So you don't wanna, don't let me over, don't let me convince you it's something that it's not. It's a more aggressive movement, but then it's stalling that bait out and giving it time to get bit. But that Dream Shot is another one of those baits, nose hooked. This is not a bait that I fish on a, on a Texas rig. I just don't think there's enough bait there for the Texas rig. I only nose hook this bait but I really, really like that one. Yeah, good point on the Texas rig. Uh, very few of these baits I will actually Texas rig. Most of them are gonna be a little little nose rig. You know, that six inch fat, you can take a, a cover shot hook. I, um, yep. You know, I was, I don't even know how many videos ago, maybe a few weeks ago, I was flipping oh, a, 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 a cover shot and uh, fishing that six inch uh, heavy drop shot, like a three yeah. eighths ounce weight in that and, and sticking them. Uh, Texas rig, but the next bait I'm going to talk about. Actually, I'm going to talk about two baits. Is that, is that all right? You can do whatever you I want. I want to talk about um, drop shotting a swim bait or a shad style bait. You know, in my winter finesse video, I talked about this guy right here. This is the Namiki Armor Shad. It has that little fork tail. It does not have the paddle tail like the little Kitek Easy Shiner, 
but two different shad profiles, two, two different bait fish profiles. I fish them differently. This has that fork tail. This is gonna be a vertical or a, you know, a cast out, work it back to, to the boat on the bottom bait. It's a real good bait fish. Uh, it mimics a bait fish very well. You know, as you're shaking it, you give them a little bit of action. That tail's down there just dancing around. It just looks like a lazy, stupid bait fish just sitting around on bottom, being dumb, ready to be eaten. <laughs> Waiting to get pounded. Right. So that is how I fish that. But a lot of guys don't drop shot a swim bait. And what I mean by that, it's an actual swim bait. This is a little three inch easy shiner, right? Mm -hmm. It's got a paddle tail on it. So anytime I drag that, or anytime it's falling down as it's chasing that, that drop shot weight, that tail is kicking and it's swimming to me. So where I really, you can fish this on bottom, it works great, you gotta work a little bit faster. You can't just sit, let it sit there like you would with this guy because the tail's just gonna lay over and it's gonna look stupid. You have to be giving this bait action. So warmer weather, warmer water mm -hmm. uh, months, and suspended fish. And that's what I really wanted to talk to you guys about on this guy right here. You know, a lot of technology these days, you can see side imaging, you can see 360 out in front of you, all that. You can see those schools of fish. Cast out, let that bait, you know, close your bail and let that bait just kind of swim to you. It's gonna pendulum, right? You're gonna fire out there, you're gonna close your bail, the line's gonna tighten up and that bait's gonna fall. It's gonna fall and come to you. But the whole time that bait is swimming back towards you so it is a swim bait and that is how you can really catch some of those suspended fish that you can't really catch with any other uh, technique so a little little paddle tail swim bait on a drop shot if you guys haven't tried it you need to that kai tech easy shiner is a must and if you're just vertically fishing down in the schools of bait on bottom go with that Demiki armor shad both of these real quick i have them uh, paired up with the it's a number two Ooh. Number two, mosquito light hook. It's very important to go with that light hook. You don't want mm -hmm. that hook to overpower or overweight the bait and mess up the action, make it sit, sit funky in the water. It's important with all of these baits to make sure that they you rig them straight, rig them natural, make these things look as natural as possible. You don't want those baits just laying flat or laying down on your line. So, I'm only gonna say this once because I, I hate to actually give Tim credit for anything. It hurts my soul. But when, <laughs> when the guy says suspended fish, anytime that word comes out, just stop and listen. Uh, I mean, he speaks truth about suspended fish. The guy is good at catching them. You know, he held the spotted bass world record for a time. Uh, suspended fish are one of the last mysteries in bass fishing and there are a handful of guys that are really really good at catching them and everybody else just wonders what they're supposed to do when those fish are out there doing nothing roaming you can't even see them on your electronics right they're gone they're you pull up on a point they're not there you pull up on the next one they're not there your fish have vanished they're suspended fish and to most people it's a mystery there's a handful of guys that are really good at it when they talk listen to them. The last one I'm going to talk about, I actually have got a couple more, but it's along the same lines. Okay, this is a Reaction Innovation Shiver Shot. They've got a couple baits. This is the smaller guy. This is the Shiver Shot, okay? This little guy is, is essentially that same style. It's a little bit bigger. It's got fins on the side. It's got a little bit more detail to it. But again, I keep talking about the springtime because that's one of the times that I actually put time into a drop shot. That's one of the times where I know those fish are up there. They don't want to eat the way I want them to eat, <laughs> but they're still there. They haven't pulled the deep water. So you get that drop shot out and you catch them and you can catch really big ones doing that. This bait, this bait because of this color is a bait that I really like. So that exact same thing where you're barely working it, it's just quivering, but this color is called sun gill. Again, all my spring stuff is blue gill oriented, mm -hmm. right? Because you're up there in the shallows. That is a magical color. Now they've got some other really good shad style colors, but again, blue gill, that sun gill is a killer. Yeah, it, that, that, 
That little shiver shot is a cool little bait. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a combination between a drop shot bait and, and a swim bait. It's got that fork tail, but it has a total, the, the bait itself looks like a little, little swim bait. Yep. What oh, up? you're all done? It's uh, all me. I, yeah, yeah, you're up. One more. If I can open the pack. My fingers are all oily from all these different baits. Going back to Strike King, this is the half shell. This style of bait is something we've done for a long time. We used to take Reaction Innovation's beavers and slice them down the middle to create a worm that looked just like just this. Like just like it. This is almost exactly a beaver split in two. By splitting a beaver in half, you had a bait that was meaty, you could get a good hook in it, but then you had a lot going on. That flap would give you a lot of movement when you were working that bait. The half shell does all of that. You're no longer buying packs of baits, cutting them in half, screwing some of them up. <laughs> the half shell is a great bait. Nose hook, again, is the way to go with this little guy. If you put a Texas rig hook in there, you're just taking up too much of the profile. You're killing the action. Uh, if you need to fish a Texas rig bait, that's not the bait. Go to something a little bit longer, a little bit meatier, and you'll do better. But nose hooked, this bait has a ton of action, and it just flat gets bit. It's a great small mouth bait. It's a great large mouth bait particularly smallmouth because of some of their colors like morning dawn it just smashes on those fish it's a lot of fun to throw for them and it's a great profile and it's different i mean you line up all the different baits nothing else looks like a half shell so if you're fishing around a crowd if you're in a tournament you know it's going to be a finesse game it looks completely different the action is different and you can stand out and get those few key bites that you need yeah, all of these baits, that half shell caught a ton of big fish on it. It's a, such a small, unintrusive bait, but the big ones just eat it. It's just an easy, simple meal. But all of these baits narrowed down from a gigantic category of plastic worms. These seven or eight baits are must-haves, guys. So we will link all these down in, in the video description. We will link our favorite colors and uh, hooks real quick. Uh, we'll probably link those too. Yeah, definitely. And some of our favorites are the owner of the Mosquito Lights. Mosquito Light. Uh, Trocar has some good VMC, the G Finesse from Gamakatsu. So we will link our favorite hooks down below in the video description as well. Um, and a couple rods and reels too. Yeah. Because drop shotting is such a a personal thing. There's you can do it so many different ways, right? One guy will power shot, another guy is ultra finesse. But there, there are some rods there that make your life a lot easier if you're going to be out there drop shotting day after day. So we'll link you a couple of those as well. Yep. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. You found this helpful. It's just a handful of baits that you can trust, that you can put time into. You know they're consistent. You know they'll produce. You're not wasting your time out there on the water trying to learn something different. You know that these will work for you. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. See you guys.